Okay, we're recording. So this is 2902 week 6 lecture 1. This is kind of like the last new stuff in the course if you will. We're going to talk about ASM charts and signal tap. I've already written out uh, the lecture material today because I want to make the lecture short because we have had we are having nice weather for the first time in God knows how long. So we can all get out of here soon. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at the FSM ASM chart. ASM stands for algorithmic state machines. Again, this uh, snippet I have uh, taken screenshots from your book. It's from the older edition of the book. I have an older edition. So the description is very similar, but the figure numbers and the page numbers may not match. Okay, But it's in chapter 8 though. So it's from chapter 8. Again, ASM stands for algorithmic state machines. Okay, that's the first thing we're going to cover. The second thing we're going to cover is we're going to look at signal tap for the switch debouncer from lecture on Friday, the switch debouncer we designed. And note that the lab tomorrow is due at the end of lab. Uh, because I realized that uh, you need some, you may need some time to do signal tap, but if you can get models done by today, like I said on Friday, you can finish signal tap today, if not tomorrow in lab. Okay. So let's get started. Uh, arbiter. Okay. So what is an arbiter? Let me strike out some of these irrelevant sentences. So an arbiter is like the word says arbitrates, or it controls access to a shared resource. So there are multiple devices, and the most common example of the use of an arbiter is to access a bus, right? So a bus is a collection of wires, so you have multiple devices that want to access this bus, and the arbiter gives them access depending on a priority, okay? What we're going to uh, assume is we have three devices, device one, device two, device three, and the priority is device one has the highest priority, device two has the next highest, and device three has the lowest priority. So they, the inputs to the arbiter are these request signals, R1, R2, R3, okay? And the outputs are grant signals, G1, G2, G3. So let's look at the FSM uh, specification of the arbiter. So here it is, it's very straightforward. So initially in the idle state, your inputs are all zero, zero, zero. That is, none of the devices are requesting access to that shared resource, so you're in the idle state. Is that clear? This is a, what type of an FSM is this? What type of FSM is this? Huh? Why is it more? No. What depends on the current state only? You're right, it's more. No, it's wrong. It's not next state that depends on the current state only. What's the definition of a more FSM? Or how do you figure out that there's a more FSM? What do you look at? No. Yeah, output is just a function of the state. See? That's what you probably looked at. That's, I mean, that's the exact definition of a more machine. So nothing else, right? So this is a more machine. Uh, so when you're in, when you when you hit reset, you're in the idle state as usual, well-defined reset state. All the outputs are zero. So now, according to priority, you can see that from the idle state, you have let's see, one, two, three arcs. Okay. The key here is since device one has priority, so if you will, this is the request signal from device one. This is the request signal from device two. This is the request signal from device three. Right. Again, what's not apparent in the FSM is we have to assume that the inputs are positive edge triggered, okay? It says right here. Assume that all signals in the system can change values only on the positive edge of the clock signal, okay? So, R1, R2, R3 uh, is 0, 0, 0. You stay in the idle state. The moment R1 becomes 1, you don't care what the other two requests are because R1 has priority, okay? You go into this grant 1 state, you assert G1, and you stay in that state as long as R1 is asserted and the others, you don't care, okay? Because this G1 is pretty straightforward in encoding in the sense since R1 has priority. Or device 1, I'm sorry, not R1. However, notice that when you go to state G and 2, grant 2, the only way you will go to grant 2 is if device 1 is not requesting access because of the priority we assumed, yes? That's why there's a zero here, one, and then X. You cannot put an X here. Does that make sense? However, when you go back, 
so once you two things once you get into this state as long as this is asserted okay this is an assumption we make let me highlight this in red in the sense when we are in this state and even if this becomes one we don't care okay you stay in this g and 2 state yeah yeah so in the, the what this orbiter does that's a good question is uh, this is a this might is not a bug looking at what i would do is let me do this the moment you are in this state i would do this you get a one okay you don't care what these two are this is i think a more realistic one makes sense you go back to g and grant one state so this change we did here assumes the device one always has priority okay make sense same correction it's not a correction it's a feature which you can update is that clear so now there's no conflict when both devices assert the bus or no sorry not assert the bus request access to the device at the same time i keep saying bus because that's why the orbiter is used for the, it's the most common application application of an orbiter yeah are you saying you don't care if it's no there should be a zero okay so if you want good point which jp makes let's assume this is zero okay any questions on that the change i did and fix i mean fix the fsm if you want uh to also in g and grant 3 now your book i'm not going to go through this has a vhdl realization of this specification so go through it it gives you like some other it's very similar to what we have been discussing it gives you more tip, tips on how to realize uh, or how to specify finite equations using vhdl what i'm going to do now is look at the asm chart equivalent of this okay so an asm chart algorithmic state machine chart is a type of flow chart that can be used to represent state transitions and generate outputs okay so the biggest difference between an fsm and asm in my opinion is that the the decision box explicitly shows your input as opposed to an fsm where the inputs are shown on the arcs okay so here are the different uh constructs used in an asm here is the state name so the state name these are output signals so if you will this block here corresponds to this okay so for example the state name grant 3 would come here instead of state name and inside the box will go g3 equals 1 all right this is input and if you have conditional outputs it will be given a mealy type will be given in its own uh mnemonic if you will with this shape all right so let's look at an example so here is the um asm specification of the arbiter so notice let me do this let me use different colors these are states okay state names grant 1 grant 2 grant 3 okay what are these what is r1 r2 r3 huh No, what is the name of this? Just like this is called state name. What are these? No. The conditional expression is given by this pa parallelogram, but what's inside the parallelogram? What is this called? What is R1 called? What is the generic name for R1? In a finite state machine, what is this? No, it's not current state. These are the state names. So what are these? What are these? G1, G2, G3. What are they? Outputs. So what are these? Inputs. So these are the inputs. So in that respect, it's like a flow chart. Inputs. And you can't see the difference in color on the projector because the 
color resolution sucks. So G1, G2, G3 are the outputs. Okay? So you can see that You have nothing in the idle, okay? That is, none of these outputs are asserted. Do you see that? That's why there's nothing. This this output, right? This goes with the idle state. There's nothing in here. That means no outputs are asserted. Yes? Here there's only G1. So only G1 is asserted in the grant 1 state. And of course, you have to modify this ASM because you modified the FSM up there to account for priority properly. You'll have to modify this ASM appropriately. But the ASM is very useful when you have a really large uh, finite state machine, okay, as opposed to a finite state machine diagram. You will see ASMs used more often in like higher level designs. Yeah, question? Yeah, so try to figure out those changes. Uh, so what you have to do is you have to add more conditionals. Yes. Yeah, it's explicit. So what you have to do is, for example, when you're in the G2 state, right, you have to look at, uh, there are two possibilities, yes? So in the sense, uh, right now, there is only, uh, so you have to fix this. Yes? So what you have to do is you have to say R2, R1 not, for example. Okay, let me write this down. This is one way you could fix it. Yes? Then if this is true, that is if you get R2 is 1 and R1 naught is 0, okay, you take this arc. Yes? So that's how you can make it explicit. True or false? Yes. No, they're not. Okay? Is that clear? So 1s and zeros are just true and false. So you can make it very explicit if you want. But that's... Again, ASM charts, that's why they're not used for simple examples like these. Right. The FSM is more uh, informative. The ASM chart is used when you have like a really high level design. And we'll use the ASM charts for the I squared C specification later this week. Okay. You don't have to use ASM charts, you can use FSM charts. I don't care. I'm not going to explicitly ask you on the exams to use ASM or FSM. Okay. I'll ask you to just do the design. Okay? So this is example of ASM. Again, the book is very good with like looking at the VHDL and the ASM. So go through it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up the signal tap portion. So let me go. Do I have it downloaded from Friday or did I delete it? Let me check. Algorithmic state machine charts. Algorithmic state machines. Algorithmic state machine. So it's algorithmic because of the similarity to flowcharts, but it describes state machines. Very easy to remember. Okay. Uh, looks like I don't have the debouncer on here. So let me just... Um, so show you the debouncer. Let's do something else. Uh, where is Mega Wizard face lock loop? No, let's do the debouncer. Okay. Downloads. Cut. Paste. Uh, 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 extract all. Desktop. And this file, and this folder is a little big because it's got signal type data, as you will see. Come on, quick. All right. So, don't need this.
Okay. So basically, your signal tap, signal tap is an in-system logic analyzer that gets downloaded with your design. All right. So what you should do is when you look at lab three, there is some information on signal tap here. So you should go through these two documents as well. Let me open up mine. This has, I think, I believe, mine has a example of a face lock loop. So let this open up. Okay. So this is what it is. All right. So what happens is your Quartus downloads the signal tab instances with your design logic, okay? And as of now, I've been talking to Altera about this, your signal tap logic analyzer stores data from your design logic onto FPGA memory, okay? As of now, for example, you can't stream this through Ethernet. That'll be very useful. You can only stream it through, I mean, you can only get the data through JTAG. But Altera has been working. I think they already have it. It might be coming out in Quartus 13.0. I know Quartus 13.0 is coming out in May. You might be able to uh, debug your design via Ethernet. I'm not sure, right? but Altera is working on it. Yeah, this one I, I show you how to do, I think I have a 50 megahertz and 100 megahertz. So I'll show you how to use signal tap in this uh, document to look at the 100 megahertz clock and actually verify it's 100 megahertz. right? So I'll go through this. It's not, I don't know how many pages this is. It's only 16 pages long, so go through it. Uh, it's got some in important information. One important information looking at this is for signal tap to work, you have to enable the talkback feature. So uh, don't ask why, you just have to do it. So let me start that. Start with that first. Let me open up the debouncer. I'm not going to go through the PLL example because it's already online. right? I am going to go through the switch debouncer, although the debouncer is also online. We've been talking about this. We talked about the debouncer on Friday. Do, do, do. Because you got to see this once so you understand what signal type is. And of course, you need an FPGA platform to utilize this. So I need um, Ezra's DE1 board. So first thing is you got to go to tools. You got to go to options. Uh, go to internet connectivity talkback options and make sure talkback is enabled. All right. If not, you can't use signal tap. It's a bureaucratic point. And all quarters will warn you. Okay. The way you do this is let me show you, thank you, how to do this from scratch. You go to tools, uh, signal tap to logic analyzer. And once you do this, it'll open up a window like this. Right? And then what you do is you have to save this as an STP file in your, obviously, your project folder. I've already done this. Okay, I just call it any file I want. And call the file anything you want. Single tap file. Make the name more descriptive. Right? Cancel that. I'm going to close this. And the file gets automatically added to your project. Okay? And you want to open that. Okay, there it is. Yeah. Good point. You can put it in its own folder, but good question. But no, I just use one file. Uh, because if you have multiple files, you have to make sure only one of them is active. I don't know if you can do that in Quartus. I just use one single tap file. So I leave it in the top level. There's no point in putting it in its own folder because single tap does not create any new. I don't think it creates any more new files. However, to utilize single tap, you have to compile the design. I mean, once you compile the design, Outside, you should not use programmer to download your design. All right. That's point number two about signal tap. You go back to the signal tap window, which is here. You have to use. Uh, see, here is the download button. It's inactive. Okay. It's because I haven't plugged in the board yet. You have to use signal tap to download it because signal tap controls it. Okay. Point number two. Point number three. Something very important and which people forget. The first time they use signal tap, your signal tap clock okay so your signal tap is a logic analyzer it needs a sampling clock okay the signal tap sampling clock is not visible so let me write this in red something very important actually let me write all the three things i said in red this is number two signal tap so these are all very important the sense enable talkback feature. Uh, 
under see options oops tools options internet connectivity under cordis tools options internet connectivity talkback options it was just a bureaucratic thing. Point number one. Point number two is signal tap sampling clock is not visible, but signal tap is always sampling, right? It only displays the data when the trigger conditions are met, and we'll cover the trigger conditions, okay? Tap is always sampling. Nyquist Shannon says that if you want to sample a signal, your sampling frequency must be greater than or equal to twice the max frequency in your design, right? Let's say you have a 100 megahertz signal you need to sample, for example, the PLL thing I was showing. So if this is 100 megahertz, what should your minimum sampling frequency to be? Should What should your minimum sampling frequency be? 200 megahertz, it's just a sampling theory. Just remember that. If you're like getting, wait, I'm not getting anything, I'm not seeing anything correctly, that's because your sampling frequency is off, all right? Now going back to signal tab, there are multiple windows here. Uh, primarily, we'll be concerned with one, two, three, four, uh, the JTAG configuration, this is when you download the design, right? Uh, this tells you the amount of memory. Uh, this is the instance manager portion. It tells you the amount of memory your design is using. Signal configuration is very important. I'm not going to muck around with this a lot, right? In the sense, in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to use, how to set up the clock, which is what you do here. Um, how to set up what data you want to see, okay? and uh, how to see the data. How to set up the data, sorry, how to set the trigger, and how to see the data, okay? So let's do that. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna, yeah, question? Yes, so you have to leave, so I'll show that to you. So remove file, I'm gonna start this all the way from scratch. So signal tap to logic analyzer. I'm going to save this. Uh, let me do this. Uh, let me close this. So let me delete that file. Let me start single tab again. Okay, nothing here. So there's nothing. So let me maximize this. Go to file, new file. Oh, what, what, what did I do? Wrong. File. Save as oh, signal tap file. Bad name, but whatever. Okay. Input and data trigger is empty. Yes, I haven't given it anything yet. Uh, do you want to enable signal tap to file for the current project? Yes, enable it. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to so you can see it automatically added this new file. I'm going to first, as usual, analyze and synthesize my design. Make sure there are no errors. Once I do this, the signals in my design become available to signal tap for you to probe as, I mean, for you to use as clock or probe the data. Is that clear? So you have to do an analysis and synthesis once for two obvious reasons. One, to make sure there are no errors in your design. Number two, because there are no errors in your design, the signals will be available for you to use in signal tap. Okay. So here, just do an analysis and synthesis. You can check the RTL viewer if you want. I'm, I'm not going to bother checking it. All right. Pay attention to your warnings and stuff, but I'm not going to pay attention because I, I know it works. So let's go back into signal tap. I had it open. There it is. Right. Okay, now what I'm going to do, first thing is I usually do is I do the signal configuration of the clock, right? So uh, sample depth 128. Of course, you can't do like 128K because you don't have enough memory on your FPGA board, okay? Let me ask you this. Suppose I use a sampling depth of 64 bytes, okay? 
uh, how much now suppose I have a hundred megahertz clock and a one hertz clock okay which will fill up the buffer quicker the hundred megahertz or the one hertz so what which one the hundred megahertz yes so remember that make sense for the same buffer size if you have a faster clock higher frequency smaller period it's going to sample more often it's going to fill up the buffer quicker is that clear again this is a real-time logic analyzer right number one number two where you will need signal tap specifically is in your project when you interface the woofs and audio codec okay because you don't have a <coughs> model sim model of your audio codec it's very prudent if you learn how to use signal tap I mean, you need it for the lab three but for your project for checkpoint one you need to know how to use signal tap to debug your design right trust me it'll be very helpful you can't it's very difficult it's not you can't it's very difficult to debug checkpoint one using model sim yes model sim is very useful but signal tap is extremely helpful yeah. now for the clock i can choose any clock i want i want to choose the one hertz clock so what you what you will do this is like standard windows um i guess concepts if you will click on this dot 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 so you'll look at a note finder will open up i don't want to look at signal tap post fitting i'm going to look at design entry all names i'm going to list it now something important So uh, let me go into, I can go into different instances, uh, generic. So I'm going to look at my one hertz clock, generic clock divider, clock one hertz instance, clock out, select that. This is going to be my clock, yes, okay? Something important, if you see this in red, okay, that means your signal got synthesized away. Remember your synthesizer? optimizes everything right some of these signals might get synthesized away yeah so one way to avoid this is use the attribute keyword the keep keyword all right not attribute keep remember however i don't recommend doing that the simplest way to avoid that is to do what i'm doing that is use driven outputs for example the one hertz clock if you look at this right i'm using the clock one hertz instance of the generic clock divider i'm using the clock out output so if you go to the switch debouncer the clock one hertz notice i'm sending it to a hex to an led yes that's what i'm using as my clock signal so the, the fact that I'm sending the one hertz clock out to an LED ensures it is not synthesized away, that entire path, okay? That's what I recommend. Any clock you use, rule of thumb, send it to an LED, okay? So let me write this down in red. So point number three is there's a rule of thumb. Drive sampling clocks to LED, to board LEDs, to prevent synthesizer optimizations, if you will. Okay? It's just an industry rule of thumb. You could use the keep keyword, but why? Right. This way, when you see the LED, like either flash at one hertz, or it's flashing really fast, I mean, it's always on, quote unquote, at 100 megahertz, you at least know the path is coming. No, I, I don't know what reference you're talking about. The LED here, I don't, I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Um, unfortunately, I don't keep that consistent. Yeah. But anyway, here's my clock. First thing, you set up a clock. The sample depth depends on what the heck you're trying to do. For example, in I squared C, the sampling clock will be 100 kilohertz, and we'll discuss, or like, I don't know, 10 kilohertz, I don't know what it is. Right? So we'll discuss later in this week and next week how w big your sample depth should be. Okay? Just depends on what you want to do. This is the first thing you should do, set up a clock. Next, you set up your data. So go into the data uh, setup window, okay? Dub it says here, double click to add nodes. So double click to add nodes. So 
what I'm going to do again, I'm going to go to design entry, all names, list. Uh, let me now use the board. Let's see, switch, right? So I'm just going to use SW, okay, input group. I'm going to look at hex 0 and hex 1, I believe. Yes. I don't have to use uh, global ports. I can use any signal in the middle. Okay. I don't know. Let's look at some random signal. Okay. Let's look at up counter. Oh, yeah, I have an up counter. So let's look at that. Up counter. Let's look at the count value. Yes. It's only two bits, right? Let's look at that. Just for the hell of it. All right. Hit OK. So notice now, none of these signals are red. That means they have not been synthesized away. The ports are kind of obvious, okay? This one, not so obvious, but it's not synthesized away. It's actually a register, I think. All right. Trigger enable. Uh, no, don't trigger on everything. Um, I guess just trigger on the switch, all right? Uh, what are the trigger conditions? Right click. Uh, let's trigger on rising it. So when I move the switch up, you can see it's RR binary. Okay. There are 10 switches. Wait, where are there? Oh, yeah, there are 10 switches on the DE1 board. I'm just using the first two, right? So let's not trigger on these. Okay. So that's it. I'm just switching on the first, triggering on the first two, rising edge, okay? And something important, let's see what my minimum sample depth is, 64. So it's going to take some time in the sense I need 64 samples at one hertz, all right? 64 seconds, it's going to take more than a minute. Make sense? Just be aware of that. You'll be like, wait, why am I not seeing anything? Because it's taking time, right? Uh, so let me save this. Now, let's see, no device is selected, so let's just plug in the board here. Again, obviously, you cannot use signal tap without uh, FPGA board. But this is very powerful, as you will see. You don't need your little logic analyzers from lab. Not little, those big logic analyzers. Let me just plug that in. Uh, let's see. Let me synthesize the whole. Actually, let me just close this. Synthesize the whole thing. So let me run into uh, assembler, generate programming file, and then I'll open up the single tap file again. Select the design. I mean, select the FPG, etc. Download it, uh, trigger it, and see what happens. Okay. And that's it. We're done with the lecture. Again, single tap is very powerful. It's very useful. Learn how to use it. Some people jump directly to signal tap instead of model sim. I don't recommend that because guess what? If you make a small change here, you have to recompile your entire design because you don't have incremental compilation in the web edition of Quartus. Okay? It may not be as, it may not seem like a pain now, but when you get into your project, recompiling it every time to run signal tap becomes a pain. So you got to do functional simulation. Signal tap is once you verify the functionality, you download it to the board. Something's not right. Your signal tap is like you use it for timing, right? So anyway, let's do the fitter, and once it's done, we'll, I'll do more signal tap, and then, like I said, we're done. Do, do, do. Oh, come on, man! Somebody should take the least amount of time. What warning did I get? What warnings did I get? Come on. All right, signal tab file. So let's double click on that. And then now we should be able to access the board. Oh, boy. Not responding. That's not good. Uh, looks like my cord has crashed. No. Oh, well. Save this. 
close that because we're done with that. Let me rename the lecture while Cordis is thinking. This is spring 13, week 6 lecture. Whoops. Uh, ASM charts and signal tap. There. Okay, Cordis, what are you up to? Oh, come on, dude. Are you there? Come on. Yeah, so you can see signal tap now sees the board, okay, and you'll see some blue communication LEDs flicker. Sees it, but now it's like you have to download the file from here. Remember, don't use program manager, okay? So SOF, you can't use POF because POF goes into flash at single tap. Remember, it stores as of now the data on on chip FPGA memory. Make sense? Open. When you hit download, it's this invalid JTAG configuration. It's because you haven't downloaded the design yet. Download it. It's waiting for JTAG, and you'll see it like think and all that stuff. Um, that's okay. It's not running, all right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to don't cut auto run it. Right? Don't keep re-triggering it. Just run analysis once. And instance not found. What the heck? What's going on? All right, let's try this again. Sometimes signal tap goes nuts. Why is it still saying invalid JTAG configuration? Uh, 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 uh. Set up USB blaster. It shouldn't say this. Switch. Oh, switch to bones. Come on. Yeah. Wait, how does my design work? Is that an enable signal or something? Reset. Clock one hertz. Yeah, the clock is always running. SW zero. It's just SW zero. That's okay. Uh, it shouldn't say instance not found. Let's see. Huh? Yeah, that's fine. There are two chips on it. Um, it's, it's okay. That's okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, our design's working. Yeah, I just noticed that the one hex zero is not debounced, right? <laughs> yeah, the hex zero like changes randomly. I just noticed it change, right? The hex one doesn't because that's debounced. So it's working. What the hell's wrong with this thing? Come on. I want to go home. Yeah, let's, let's try this again. Ah, uh, yeah, fine, whatever. Yeah, it's seeing it. Not running. Okay, invalid JTAG configuration download. Program. Uh, joint task. It's just the protocol which you used to. Yeah, instance not found. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, it's basically saying it doesn't. You know, it's right. Clock out. That's right. Why is it saying instance not found? Yeah, something's wrong. Oh, no, I don't want to close this. So it's downloading and it's not. Okay, let's try this again. Do a power cycle on the board. No. JTAG setting is all fine. I don't know if there's something wrong with the way my tablet um, is configured. It's the only thing I can think of because I have not tried signal tap on my tablet. So you shouldn't say invalid JTAG configuration. Instance not found. It's 
this is the right file. Hmm. Okay, so I'll leave you to finish this in the sense this is what I need you to do. All right, so download it onto your, let me know if this problem occurs on your laptop as well. It shouldn't. Okay, so I'm just wondering, let's see. One thing, I just enable trigger on that one. Compile project to continue. Okay, let's try this again. Let me just do this. Just trigger on the rising edge of switch. Zero. This doesn't work. So I want you to try this on your laptops, right? Well, uh, ideally tomorrow, or I mean, ideally today. So uh, let's see if this works. If this doesn't work, well, like I said, just try it. Yeah, the design's working, but I don't know why signal tap is like complaining. But uh, so while it's compiling. So once you do the steps I just did, download, hit run analysis, it'll say waiting for trigger. And once when you move the switch up, uh, what you should see, uh, it's done. So let's see. Programming device, yeah, it's programming there. Waiting for JTAG. But why does it say invalid JTAG configuration? JTAG, did I plug it into the right? Yeah, it's only one JTAG. So this is what you should see. Right? It should say, it should not say instance not formed, it should say waiting for trigger. And basically, once you pull this switch uh, zero up, it'll start, uh, it'll say acquiring. This will change to acquiring. And after 60 seconds, approximately, you will see data, okay? Now, the only final thing about single tap is these, this time bar is in sample numbers. That's not very useful. So what I usually do is I right click, I go to time units, and the time unit is seconds for us, correct? Because the sampling clock is one hertz, yes? Oh, that's more useful, okay? The sample numbers are not very useful. But again, let's uh, resolve this tomorrow in lab. I don't know why it's not working. Hopefully, it's my tablet. Okay, this should work. Let me know either way, and we'll uh, figure out signal tap. Again, your job is your job is to figure out signal tap I and mean, finish up this exercise for your lab three tomorrow. Okay, but ideally, you can finish it today if you're done with models. And yeah, so that's about it. So that that's it for all the material in the course. Starting next lecture, we're going to do project lectures. I think new, but it's just uh, different reference designs in 2902. And that's it, we're done. The question asked, Mod 3, what signals you want to watch? Whatever you feel is like relevant for you to understand it. So the more signals you have, the less memory you can put. So it's all those constraints come into play. Yeah, you don't have model similar, you don't have those constraints, right? Yeah.